Nixon became so concerned about the astronauts becoming stranded that his aides prepared a memorial speech to be broadcast worldwide. This classified document remained buried in government archives for over 30 years. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there Buzz is... Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, however, would never have given up hope. Rather than worry about things like that, we'd face them when the time came. Well, we'd work as hard as we could to fix the problem uh, until the oxygen ran out and we just uh, uh, fell asleep. Negative. Head on up the ladder, Buzz. With possible engine failure weighing on their minds, the astronauts returned to the module from their two-hour moonwalk, only to make a shocking discovery. In looking around at some of the lunar dust on the floor, I discovered something that really didn't belong there, the broken end of a uh, circuit breaker. In the cramped conditions of the module, their bulky spacesuits had snapped off the very circuit breaker essential for starting up the engine. Houston, uh, Tranquility, uh, do you have a way of showing the configuration of the engine arm circuit breaker? Uh, because the end of it uh, appears to be broken off. Mission Control were powerless to help. If the engine could not be started by some workaround means, there would be no rescue available. It was up to the astronauts to improvise a solution using only items they had with them on board. To this day, Aldrin treasures the everyday object that saved their lives. These are uh, my memorabilia that represents our solution to, to a somewhat critical problem. In the uh, countdown procedure, I used a pen, uh, one of several that we, we had on board that, that didn't have uh, metal on the end, and we used that to push the circuit breaker in. Okay, Master Armand. Aldrin jammed his pen into the circuitry, and with Armstrong at the controls, Apollo 11 engaged the engine and hoped for the best. But would this desperate measure be enough to save their lives? On the lunar surface, Buzz Aldrin is jamming his pen into the starting mechanism of the lunar module's engine, their only means of escape from the moon. Aldrin's ingenuity had saved the pair from a lonely death. It remained for the crew to rendezvous with the command ship orbiting far above the surface. Okay, Mike, I'll get, uh, try to get position here, and then you got it. Only when this maneuver was accomplished could the crew begin to believe that Apollo 11 might bring them and their precious cargo of moon rock safely home. Once we left lunar orbit, that gave us, uh, for almost the first time, uh, a, a relaxed sensation of we're heading home, we're looking to come back, and then have our own slightly late celebrations. But they weren't home and dry yet. Eight days after the start of their mission, Apollo neared the Earth to prepare for the last great danger, re-entry. If the module approached the atmosphere from the wrong angle, it could burn up or simply bounce off into space. If you come in too steep, uh, you're going to have very high g-forces, high temperature. If you come in too shallow, you won't slow down below orbital velocity before you start gaining altitude and going back out again. And of course, under those conditions, you may not have enough oxygen to survive uh, coming back in again. See you later. There's blackout. The intense heat of re-entry caused a total communication blackout with the module. For four anxious minutes, no one on the ground would know if the tiny craft had survived the high temperatures. 
Off the coast of Hawaii, Nixon aboard the carrier USS Hornet awaited his next photo call. At blackout, uh, we were showing velocity 36,237 feet per second. Range to go to splash 1,510 nautical miles. We were excited, all right. We were just wondering, would the parachutes open? Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Hornet, Hornet, over. Apollo 11, this is Apollo 11, reach your last clear. At 15,000 feet, the three parachutes deployed. Against all the odds, Apollo 11 was coming home. And somewhere, uh, I guess, below 10,000 feet, we could smell uh, salt air. Uh, and, and that was quite a uh, welcome home uh, sensation. In the back of my mind, I could almost hear President uh, Kennedy's words. We choose to go to the moon. We choose. we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Now, all the close calls, equipment malfunctions, and human errors that nearly cost the crew their lives were forgotten. The first lunar landing was a success. NASA believed itself to be invincible. The feeling was definitely there that, you know, man, just throw any challenge at us and we can meet it. We can do anything. You want us to go to Mars? We'll do that. You want us to build a space station? We'll do that. You want us to build a reusable space shuttle? Sure, we'll do that too. But over 30 years later, and with the reality of losing shuttle missions in space, the men on the Apollo team now realize just how lucky they had been. If we were to approach somebody today with the idea of flying to the moon like we had in 1969, they would laugh in our face and say, there's no way that you're going to be able to do that. It's not safe enough. Space flight is intensely risky. High risk was needed to get that mission done. I think most of the flight crews would agree that had we not stopped flying Apollo missions when we did, we would definitely have lost lives on those missions. But despite the perils of blast-off, encounters with a UFO, low fuel, computer failures, and the need to save the mission with a ballpoint pen, there is still one man for whom failure was not an option. I don't look back uh, and pat myself on the back for being part of a real risky maneuver uh, I think we made some bold decisions yeah we we had uh, things that could have gone wrong and some did go wrong but we also had an inspired group of people uh, pioneering and I marvel at the very close conditions that resulted in my still being alive to go to the moon and to be here today it is only now that we can truly understand just how close to disaster Apollo 11 really came.